Hey, and welcome back to This Bites For You. In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and a brief overview of the Thermaltake TH360 ARGB Sync CPU liquid cooling unit. We're going to be doing a build as well a little bit later on, utilizing this big bad boy in a few of the unboxings you've recently seen me do. So definitely stay tuned for that. But anyway, enough chat. Come over here real quick and let's see what's inside. All right, so here she is again, the Thermaltake TH360 ARGB Sync. We can see right over here, this is compatible with Asus Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, MSI Mystic Light Sync RGB. This thing looks beautiful. We can see right over here, the pump is RGB lit, as well as the fans. Supports RGB 16.8 million colors, but pretty sure those already told you already. 1500 RPM. 28.2 dBA. That is pretty quiet for a liquid cooling unit. Along the side over here, TH360 ARGB sync. Nothing big. Towards the bottom here, we can see some of the specifications in a bunch of different languages as well. This also supports six RGB fans or six 120 millimeter fans for a push pull. So you can add another three later on. All right, and along the back, some of the features. It must be connected to a five volt addressable RGB header on the motherboard or use the included ARGB controller to proceed to control the RGB lighting. So what that means, you can either connect it to your motherboard and use all of these to control it, or you can use the controller right over here. So this will work for most people. All right, so let me go ahead and open it up. All right. All right, so first off, comes with this piece of foam right over top. You couldn't see it because it kind of slid out of the way. Comes with this guide over here, parts list, Intel inside, or Intel installation guide, AMD installation guide, which by the way, this is compatible with Intel LGA 2066, 2011-3, 2011, 1366, 1200, 1156, 1155, 1151, and 1150, as well as AMD FM2, FM1, AM4, AM3+, AM3, AM2+, Plus, and AM2. Then the installation guide here, which you won't have to worry about because I'll be installing and I'll show you how to do it in that video. Then they also include the product warranty policy. Very important, make sure you read it. <laughs> All right. Then they have over here a bunch of, ah, okay, so this is the controller and a bunch of other cables, it seems. Okay, so they have this controller. You can select mode, color, and speed controls into a SATA power connection. And this would go into the pump or the radiator, not 100% sure or just yet, or the hub, should I say. Okay, and then we have E and F, which are both the same, this little guy here, and this guy on both of these cables. What this does is it connects into one fan and then into the other fan. So kind of just bridging all the fans together or chaining them together. Then we have over here, we just move all this so we have access to everything. Okay, they bring a little tube of thermal paste. Not sure exactly what it is, but it's there. Then this handy dandy piece of cardboard, which will fit in between this and the back of the motherboard to make sure there is no contact. And then this guy that'll slide into the pump, securing it into the AMD socket. Then we have these extension and branched out cables. You can see that right over here. These are fan header cables. Well, at least this one is. And then this one will connect to the unit itself. Then we have four LGA 
2011 screws four of them and then we have these are a lot of assorted screws so right off the bat These will be used for AMD to go in between the back plate and the screw itself. And don't worry, I'll show you that in the installation video. And then these will be for the liquid cooling unit attaching to the fans, or should I say the fans attaching to the liquid cooling unit. And these will be the ones that will be used alongside with these for the back plate. And these will be used to screw down the pump into the support or the back plate, or, you know, depending on what Intel or AMD, these will both be used. And these washers will be used like with these for the back plate in between the this and the motherboard on the top part of the board it's a little odd explaining it but you'll see it during the installation all right and all of these screws will be used to attach the radiator to the top of the case or the front or the bottom of the case don't do the bottom the front or the top all right now with that out of the way let me put everything back in the bag and let's get to this all right so starting off this comes with three 120 millimeter rgb fans i won't bother taking them all out i'll take one out nice looking simple fans nothing too complicated for the most part it's going to be hidden aside from the rgb lights but that'll overpower you know seeing the fans themselves comes with sleeved cables one for a three pin header and then one for or two more for the connecting them between each other for the chain and then we have the pump and the radiator itself there's nothing else in the box So they actually did, and I didn't realize it while I was showing it to you, just noticing it now, they don't include any thermal paste on here. So some people just wipe it off, don't even bother with it, and some people use what's on there, they give you the option. So I'll go ahead and leave that on there for now. I don't want to put my greasy grubby fingertips on here, and definitely the same for you guys. If you do, just make sure you clean it so that it's nice and clean. And then over here, we can see the top of the radiator or the pump. It says thermal tape there, and that is what will light up. It's kind of sleek, sexy, and simple looking. You can see that there. All right. And then this is where you'll screw it in to the retainers I showed you earlier. From there, branches out this three pin fan header. And then these two cables like we saw in the fan as well to daisy chain. Has a nice sheathed, you can see that there, tube. The tubes are 400 millimeters long. Not incredibly long, I don't think. I mean, it's not bad, but just feels like maybe it should be a little bit longer, but either way. We'll see how good or bad it is, of course, when we go to use it, which will be very soon. And then we can see the aluminum radiator here. It feels so nice and cold to the touch. It looks actually relatively thin. Let me measure that real quick for you. All right, it is exactly an inch thick. 
and I'll go ahead and put on the screen down here how many millimeters it is. Now let's measure the length. Let's do it this way. Fifteen and a quarter inches. And again, I'll put it in millimeters down below. And the pump is slightly over two inches and in height is about almost two inches as well slightly over an inch and a half thick so that is pretty nice again i'm amazed at how thin this is but we'll see how well it cools again we're going to have three 120 millimeters on this bad boy so i'm sure it's going to cool well but of course we'll find out soon enough well that was a longer one than I thought it would be. Sorry about that, guys. So we did an unboxing of the Thermaltake TH360 RGB ARGB sink liquid cooling unit. This looks to be like an awesome liquid cooling unit. I don't know just yet, but we will be doing a, a build very soon. I want you guys to join me on that build so you can see how easy or difficult it is. Either which way, it'll definitely help you out. As always, please do click like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And if you feel like it helps you, go ahead, buy me a cup of coffee, if you'd like, of course. But anyway, thanks for stopping by and checking out this unboxing and overview. The next video will be much more amazing. Yeah, see you guys.